Now, if, if I could just explain the bill quickly, um, and it, it's a little bit of a complicated issue, but it's, uh, it's something that I think very um, passionately about that Missouri needs to have a strong infrastructure system. We've seen with the passage of Amendment 3 back in 2004 what the Missouri Department of Transportation and its planning partners, construction partners, and community partners across the state can do uh, with the dollars and how they're a good fiduciary of those dollars and put those um, projects to work. We've had many projects, thanks to the Amendment 3 that voters voted on in the state, uh, that were implemented in the years 2005 through 2011, and those projects have been seen all around the state. And profile projects that people might be uh, familiar with are the I-64, Highway 40, um, eight-mile stretch through St. Louis. Uh, also in that region, you're seeing the new Mississippi River Bridge come up and out of the water. Uh, down in the uh, southern part of the state, you've seen the uh, Highway 67 corridor that we worked very closely with our friends in Poplar Bluff to get through and, and it was a project that needed to be done for a long time. You've seen expansion, uh, completion of corridors such as 60 to the south and 36 to the north. You've seen projects in the Kansas City area like the Paseo Bridge. You've watched us replace 802 bridges across the state that are some of our um, neediest bridges that we have that are we're really uh, literally falling apart at the seams. Um, you've seen expansions through the lake area with 54. You've seen the the uh, three lane, or some people say a shared four lane from five from Cabin and down to Lebanon. So there's been impacts of Project 65, I could go on forever down in the Springfield area, that when the proper resources are in front of the Department of Transportation, they've proven they've been able to deliver those resources, those projects, and they've proven to uh, be on time and under budget in managing how um, we are efficient with that, that money. And most importantly, during that same time frame, I think the thing that the body needs to really keep in mind is as the department has um, unrolled some of these projects and made these uh, needed infrastructure improvements, um, we've also concentrated and kept our eye on the ball, the number one uh, focus, which is a return for investment in Missourians, not just in a money investment, but in lives. Our fatality count in 2011 was the lowest it's been since the 40s. And that's because the department, through many different partners that had ideas, started to install things like median rumble strips and median guard cables and brighter signs and stripes in those rumble strips. Things that have saved Missouri lives. And I think as we improve our infrastructure system, we need to keep our eye on that ball, number one, and then the importance of the other economic benefits, uh, number two. But we, we reached that point that we talked about back when I was on the Highway Commission for several years is that we, we got to the cliff. And there's nobody in this room or building that probably hasn't heard about the funding cliff that transportation was going to experience. We start talking about it as far back as 2009. We saw what was about to happen with the funding for the Missouri Department of Transportation. We, we literally went from about a $1.4 billion construction program when those projects I just mentioned were be able to, to put underway and, and aligned with our community partners to, to lay out and proceed, down to today's at number of about 700 million. So about half of where we were just two or three years ago. Uh, and the reason for that is, is Amendment 3, as the voters voted on it, by statute required that money, that revenue stream to be bonded and to put into projects and spent immediately. So it was a great impact on the state. It allowed us to address many concerns on our 32,000 miles of roads. And as I mentioned, our, our 10,400 bridges as the uh, seventh largest transportation system in the United States, but we're 40th in something in funding. Uh, but we were able, to, with Amendment 3, to address many of those resources. However, as per the statute, those dollars um, were used as accordingly, and those dollars are no longer available. So the funding level of the Department of Transportation, like I said, was cut in half. So you take that piece. Then you take the federal piece, where we send 18.4 cents of every gallon of gas out to the feds. They put it in the Highway Trust Fund, and then they distribute that and send it back to us. That process has been broken for a number of years because of a poor economy and low gas sales. Highway Trust Fund has not been able to be funded uh, the way the bureaucrats in, in Washington thought it was, and much to everybody's surprise, um, that 
that source of revenue is basically insolvent for almost all the states, so Missouri's not unique in that. We have a new reauthorization plan from the uh, feds called MAP21, but the funding and the levels of uh, uh, dollars that are able to provide to states are significantly down than in years past because of that lack of funding from the gas tax federally. And then as long as we're on gas tax, as you know, Missouri collects 17 cents on every gallon for its gas tax model. And gas tax model is something that's starting to go down and down every year and has for several years for two reasons. And when the higher price of gas comes into play, there's less gallons purchased by the general public. So gas use is down because of the higher price. So therefore the gas tax, which is for every gallon that is not indexed, obviously goes down. The second thing has happened is whether the federal government mandates it or we as the motoring public demand it, those two forces have combined and fuel mileage increases among manufacturers has gone through the roof. Uh, and I would maintain, you know, Mr. President and the body that Ford has done a very good job in those fuel mileage increases, but the truth of the matter is all manufacturers have done a fantastic job of building products with better miles to the gallon and as that better mile to the gallon takes effect and you take into the high price of gas, the monies that we receive from gas tax, both in that federal model and our state model, have gone down significantly and are predicted to continue to go down because fuel mileage on vehicles is gonna to continue to go up. So we're at a problem. So I think it's this body's uh, job and as policymakers to A, identify problems, which is not always popular, and then B, present to the public potential fixes. Last year we talked a little bit about a partial fix, which is public-private partnerships. Specifically, we talked about public-private partnerships, our toll road on I-70. It generated a lot of conversation. It really elevated the need uh, for I-70 repairs, but we didn't get consensus around that. Missouri as a state did not seem ready to build consensus around that, and we're one of only 14 states that don't have that type of funding. 36 other states do use it as a way to fund transportation but we couldn't coalesce around that idea. Because of that uh, conversation, I believe, um, the Speaker of the House uh, convened a blue ribbon panel on transportation, which had members of the private sector and elected officials and met all over the states and listened to citizens and communities about their transportation concerns. Uh, our former Senator from Saline County uh, also had joint committee meetings all over the state where we too went out as a joint committee and listened to uh, the public and to our community partners on what their concerns were with transportation. And at one point in time, we started asking, how do we fix this? What is, the, what is the best way to move forward? Well, there's not a lot of popular ways, let me tell you that right now. And there's very few ways when it comes to funding a transportation system when you're talking about generating several hundred million dollars a year to put into a construction project. That's a significant amount of dollars, and most of the revenue streams we have available to us as as citizens will not generate those types of large dollars uh, without huge increases. For instance, if we wanted to generate that kind of money through a gas tax, um, it would be somewhere at a 20 to 25 cents a gallon. Missourians do not want 20 to 25 cents a gallon to gas taxes. I can guarantee you that. You can ask your coffee shop that. You can look at the polling. Uh, you can walk out in the hall and find that answer out. So the, the, the ways that we fund transportation are limited. One of the ideas that came through in the Blue Ribbon panel and from many of the testimonies we, we heard over the last couple of years was the, the op opportunity to place before the voters, to let the voters decide, a limited time funding for transportation and infrastructure. So what the SJR does is it proposes that there would be an election in November of 2014 and Missouri voters would decide if this opportunity if this opportunity um, is the right opportunity to fund transportation. So what would happen in two, 2014, Missourians would decide if a 10-year, one-cent sales tax that's dedicated to transportation would be the right way to address our transportation needs. Just a few details, Mr. President, of that, um, of that proposal would be um, that would generate about $7.8 billion uh, for Missouri's Transportation Department. Out of that money, one-tenth of that would be dedicated to cities and counties. They would be required to use that money on transportation and infrastructure needs within their own jurisdictions, but they would be able to decide what the projects are that are best there. 
We also would have the monies into a dedicated pot, if you will, here in the state, so that future politicians, anybody who wanted to mess with that could not mess with it. It would be locked up for use by the Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission. Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission has a funding formula that they would put in place that they've used since 2003 that takes 19 planning partners across the state and takes their input into the priority projects in their areas and would then go ahead and decide what the priority projects are for those areas before the issue goes to the voters. But as I tell people all the time, those are not projects you want debated on this floor or in this building. That would happen after it came out of the building, but certainly well in advance. So voters would see what it is that they're, they have the opportunity to uh, uh, vote on. As I mentioned previously, it would not be on food and prescription drugs. The legislation says we could not raise motor fuel taxes in that 10-year period, so it would give the public peace of mind that that is frozen. We would not also toll existing roads, so that would be frozen. And there would be an accountability piece for the um, Missouri Department of Transportation and the Highway Commission to come before this body and the governor every year to update us on the progress of how those projects are going. Uh, I think it, it is all encompassing as far as the accountability piece and the fact that voters get to weigh in to decide if they think this is the right, is the right way to go. We've had multitudes of organizations uh, testify at both the Senate and the House hearings about why they believe this uh, proposal is favorable, and not just the obvious ones. People would say, well, contractors are always for that. But economic developers from across the state have come together to tell us that an infrastructure system, a thriving infrastructure system here in the state of Missouri, is what Missouri needs to create jobs and to grow our economy and to continue to be the transportation leader that we have developed ourselves to be. Organizations like Missouri Farm Bureau have recently sent a letter out to legislators saying that they realize the need for tr additional transportation funding and that they would support this concept moving through the legislature. So we have statewide support. We have local communities, local cities, governments, uh, chambers of commerces, uh, you name it. We've had many, many uh, folks weigh in on this uh, proposal. And like I said, at the end of the day, it is up for the, pe to the, for the people to decide. So I feel like it's comfortable for me as a person who is not normally, a, uh, in, in our party especially, a conservative likes additional taxes. But Missourians realize there is a need for investment in our infrastructure. They realize the return on that. MoDOT has done their part. They've taken a very painstakingly approach to right-sizing their organization in the last 18 months, where they've squeezed even more money out of their organization to put towards roads and bridges. So everybody that's a stakeholder has come to the party and tried to add to this conversation to help it move forward. 